Hello, my name is Scott Middlebrooks. I work here at ASML in the research department. And for today's whiteboard session, I'll be answering the question, what is computational lithography? So if you pull apart your iPod or your iPad or your laptop, you look into the heart of what makes these devices work, you'll have an integrated circuit. If you were to break that apart and zoom in really, really, really close, at some point you'll see a geometric pattern of, of shapes, of lines, of circles that make up this device. Now our scanners at ASML uh, make these patterns. Basically what we do is illuminate light through some mask, which we just be a glass plate with chrome, that we then illuminate onto our silicon wafer. Now this mask, should look a lot like what we image onto the silicon. So we have patterns that we want to image here. I'll let you in on a little secret. This pattern doesn't look anything like what will actually show up on the silicon wafer. Now, what happens during this illumination is we basically activate a, a photosensitive resist, and then that sparks a set of uh, reaction diffusion type of equations. All these equations are very nonlinear. So this doesn't really scale. What ultimately will show up on this pattern are things that you may not even have expected. You've got some pullback on your lines, maybe you even have some of these patterns that don't exist. Now when the devices were bigger, 10, 20, 30 years ago, this didn't matter so much. But now as the devices get smaller and smaller, if these shapes start to deform too much, the device won't work. Now there's a field called computational lithography which looks at the models that predict the mask to what you ultimately get on the silicon. Now these models are made up of um, aerial image type models, what happens with the light, what happens with the light onto the resist, what the chemistry does, what the reaction diffusion type equations do. These models are very complex, but we want to use these models to design a mask. 10, 20 years ago, they could do this by hand. They could go and put in these assist features onto the mask. And what that would do then is cause my pattern to start to pull out, to finally get to the shape of what I want. Now this was an iterative process and it was learned uh, type of processing. People would try something and see what worked. Now as these models get better and better, we can use them as part of an optimization problem and say, I want my pattern on the, on the wafer to be exactly this. What should the mask be? Now without this, we wouldn't be able to image the patterns that we image. So it's the combination of our models and the combination of our exceptional tools that allow us to make these patterning. It's that combination that makes this holistic and powerful. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more, please follow us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post them below.